our next implementation of union find is going to be a tree based implementation. Here we have several disjoint sets visualized as a bunch of trees. And just like we saw with our link list based union find, our representative is going to be one node within the different sets. For each of them, that thing is going to be the root of the tree. So it's gonna be x1, x2, x4, and x17 for these various trees that I have here. And when we set up a tree, all we're going to do is set the node's parent to be itself. So rather than having the parent point at nil, we're going to have it point at itself as a different sort of way of representing the parent of the root. So when we make a set, we have the parent point at itself. How are we going to make find set? Well, if the parent of x is itself, then we have are there. So for example, x4, if I want to find the set that x4 is in, well, it's parent itself. It's obviously in the set that contains x4. It's got nothing else, right? And then otherwise, we're going to find the set for the parent. So we're going to recursively call find set and until eventually we hit our base case where the parent is itself and then return whatever that thing is. So up here, if we started at x5, we would say, okay, its parent is not itself. So we go up to x7. Its parent is not itself. So we go up to x1 x1's parent is itself, so we return x1. So x1 is the representative element from that first set for x5. Similarly, x11 goes to x16, goes to x10, goes to x17, returns x17. So, seems like a very logical way to do this. The question now becomes, how are we going to combine these? Notice, these sets are not binary trees. They have a variable number of children. This has three children, two children, no children, three children, then a bunch of one children. The number of children is in no way prohibited here in these trees. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to take the sets. Let's say we wanted to union the set that has x1 and the set that has x2. So suppose I made a call to union. Let's say we did x6 and x3. If I did that, I would need to first find x6, then find its representative. So I would find x2, then I would also need to find the representative for x3, which is x1. And then I need to combine them in some way. Just like we saw with linked lists, we're going to combine these by just joining them up. So all we're going to do is take x2 and rather than having it point at itself, we're just going to go whoop, do, 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 and make it point at x1 instead. So we're going to make one of the trees parent be the representative from the other tree. So we make x2's parent point at x1. And that's it. That's very straightforward, thankfully. Let's look at the code for union before we move on. So union, it's very straightforward. Step one. Find the set for x. Step two, find the set for y. Step three, set the parent of y to be x, y prime to be x prime. So that's the step where we set the pointer to be x1. So if we want to color code it, y prime would be the thing we colored in purple. x prime would be the thing we colored in that dark blue color. And then the parent assignment is the thing we did with the purple line. So I don't know, maybe we underline it, who knows. But that's, that's how that code works. Very straightforward. But you say, why would we do it this way? Why not use some more intelligent stuff? We already talked about the smarter implementation for linked lists. Why not do the same thing here? So instead of trying to combine them based on the length, because we don't have a length here, there are two ways I think are very natural. We could talk about the number of elements. So for example, this has six elements and this has four elements and th then combine them so that we always take the thing with the fewer number of elements and make it point at the thing with more elements. Valid approach. An alternative approach would be to look at the height. And in fact, if I'm looking at this method for find set and for union, which just depends on find set, the worst case for this is going to be the height of the tree that I am looking at. So if I'm looking at this, I want to make the height as small as possible. So what I would do is if I wanted to, for example, combine 
the set containing X17 over here with the set containing X2, I would want to combine them in such a way that I don't increase the height unless I absolutely require and required to do so. So what we're going to do, let's look at the code for this. We're going to union by height. If X prime dot height is greater than Y prime dot height, then we can make the parent of Y X prime. So in that case, the height of this tree, for example, is two and the height of this tree is three. So in that case, all I want to do is make X2 point to X17 if I was to combine or union those two sets together. Because notice, then this path, which looks a bit awkward to follow, has one edge, two edge, three edge. I did not increase the height of the set containing X17 or any of the other things inside of it. Therefore, I wouldn't have increased the runtime for finding set for any of the elements that were in X17 set. Notice I added some things, so it's a bit of a lie but it seems like I have not made anything necessarily worse. So if X prime's height is bigger than Y prime's height, then make Y prime point to X prime. Conversely, if Y prime is the bigger of the two, do the opposite. And if they are the same, notice we have the trichotomy of the real numbers here. It's either greater than, less than, or equal to. So if it's equal, we're going to need to combine them and increase the height. If we look back at our original example, the height of these two trees was the same. Therefore, it didn't matter which way I made the arrows point. I was going to necessarily increase the height from two to three, no matter what I did. There was no clever way around that in this simplistic implementation. Maybe you could say, wait, maybe I do a bunch of rearranging of stuff and try to make it as wide as possible. We'll come back to that. But there's not necessarily a smarter way to do this. Something that might not be obvious here, and we'll come back to this later, is that we can actually implement this via an array. We'll come back to that in a later video, but for now, this looks awful. There's tons of pointers. Why on earth would you do this? Why is Nick torturing us? We can actually implement this with an array and we'll see that at the end of this unit. So don't panic yet. But these are our methods. We need to still analyze how long do they take. So we're gonna to need to do potentially something similar to what we did for the linked list to analyze the runtime for our tree-based union find.